AppLoader is Energy Global's tool for load testing business applications. This tutorial will show you how to get started with AppLoader quickly and easily. First, go to energyglobal.com and click Free Trial to get to our Downloads page. You can download Scenario Builder on a PC if you want to see how to create a replayable test scenario. Or you can install the AppLoader suite on a server to allow you to run your scenario with multiple users at once. For this option, you need to download AppLoader, Injector, and Scenario Builder. Please see our Getting Started Guide for information about components and configuration. Or go to Help Center on our website for help on getting started with AppLoader. After installing the three applications, open AppLoader from the icon that was created on your desktop. Log into the application with the default admin username and password. And then the application opens, showing you the injector that is now online. Now we need to create real users that can run our scenarios. Click Start Our Users and start five users in our user manager. Our user manager is part of the injector component that is used to oversee the R users during scenario playback. It enables RDP connections to the R users. We can start up to five R users in the trial version of AppLoader. The licensed versions allow as many users as you need to test your load, which you might want to do spread out across multiple injectors. The R users are all starting up now, and you can see on the left hand side, four, now five sessions have been opened. The first three are active, they're in green, the last two are still starting up. Now our users are all active, and we can start with creating a scenario. The best way to create our scenario is to do it inside our user manager. This allows us to ensure that there are no differences in the environment where we will create and run the scenario in AppLoader. First I open one of our, our users, and I'll create a really simple scenario using Notepad. I open up Scenario Builder, which exists in all of the R users. And I'll start a new scenario. Now I'm going to create a very simple scenario and I'm not going to spend time to create a more detailed scenario here, but you can watch our video on Scenario Recorder to see a more robust example. So I'm opening up Notepad and I'll just type a few things and pick something from the drop down. Okay. Now at this point I would play back my scenario, make sure there aren't any errors, and then continue on. But I'll go ahead and hit save because it's such a small scenario. It should be fine. And then the important thing is I have to send the scenario to the app loader controller. Okay. Now I can close scenario builder. go back into AppLoader and now I can click on manage tests. I'm going to create a new test plan. I'm going to give it a name
steady state time. This is the number of minutes that all our users are actively playing scenarios. I'm going to say 10 minutes and then I'm going to enforce the steady state time. So it will, even if there are errors in any of the scenarios, it will continue to run several iterations of those scenarios uh, so that they are all running at the same time for 10 minutes. The rest of these options are either optional or will be computed by the system. So I only have one injector. I'm going to choose it. And then here's the notepad test that I just created. I'm going to run it with three users. I'll just keep the, uh, the default here. And I want to uncheck the halt checkbox. That way users will continue to run even if they get a failure. And I have another scenario that I created, actually a couple, but a Citrix login is a scenario I created previously that's a little bit longer than the one that we, that we just created. I'm going to have two users run that, and uh, Halt is not checked there. Okay, now I can save and run my test plan. I can give it a note. test is about to start. Okay. Now I'm taken to the real-time execution screen and here I can watch as the R users start playing their scenarios. So I see, there we go, I see two R users are now playing, three are waiting, and there's a little bit of delay in between each one so they don't all start at the exact same time. Now I can go to our user manager and I can see each of the R users sessions running its test. So as you can see our user 1 and our user 2 are running the notepad scenario that we just created and then oh and our user 3 as well and then our users 4 and 5 are each running the Citrix scenario that I had created previously. pause now while this runs for about 10 minutes and then we'll look at the results. Okay, our test run completed. You can see here it says test run is done. Uh, we can look up and see that three users completed successfully and two completed with errors. Now I forced some errors just so we could see what it looks like when there are failures during our tests. First thing we can do is go to the dashboard and on the dashboard we see lots of information about our tests, uh, how many users ran, how many iterations, number of successes and failures, uh, some charts showing the various scenarios and what happened. Over here there's failure screenshots for the cases where there were errors. Now I can request a detailed report. This tells me that it takes about 30 seconds to create a report. And what I need to do is click on the View All Reports button. And it shows me that the request is processing. And it should shortly allow me to open up the report. This will open it up, in my case, in Word. I could choose a different uh, application if I want or, or save it for later. And this gives me a nice report with all of the summary information of my test plan. And I won't go into the detail of all of it, but basically there's some charts, there's some overall information about what ran. This report can be very useful in figuring out what happened on your system. Aside from that, we can also go to the test analysis page. We can see failures that happened. In this case, there were three failures on step 15 and one failure on step number five. And if I click on the different ones, you'll see the screenshots showing up here and here. This information was all in that report that I showed you, so you can look at it in either place, whatever you prefer. 
and backend monitors is one more place where you can see uh, information that was collected during the test run. By default, we have metrics available for CPU, memory usage, and other performance-related information. After reviewing what happened on your system during your test, you will have the information you need to know whether or not your system can handle the load you need. That's it! Now you can get started running your tests with AppLoader.